This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I'd like to talk about advanced hand tuning of fuel tables, also known as blended VE tables, most commonly known as adding a secondary fuel load. Prerequisites. Before you attempt any of this, I want to make sure the tune is relatively roughed in on either a dyno or some other method using speed density as speed density is best on most applications. I want a TPS signal that's clean and calibrated. I want virtually no loss sink errors, no loss sink errors while the motor is running or driving. A couple of loss sink errors possibly at the beginning of cranking or at the end of killing the motor are of no real concern unless you're having trouble getting the car to start. And your tuning software is showing the same AFR or Lambda as your wideband display is. If any of these are not the case, you need to deal with that first before going to any advanced tuning. This is the basic fuel equation. The part we're talking about today is the speed density times the alpha n. What we're essentially doing is going to be turning on both pieces of these where they multiply by each other, where speed density is your primary tuning method, and then we're going to use alpha n or possibly mass airflow as a second correction. I also down at the bottom want to turn off the learned fuel corrections which are the long-term fuel trims and the short-term fuel trim. The two things we do to set this up is under general settings load parameters because we tuned in speed density first this will already be in speed density but this one will probably be turned off. What I want to do is hit the uh, tag down box and choose alpha n or possibly mass airflow and then as a secondary fuel, I want it to be multiplicative, meaning the first one times the second one, and multiply maps should be turned on on most installs. I also want to go to the EGO uh, control, and under the algorithm, change it to no correction. The reason I do this is it just simply gets too confusing if your white bands are correcting all the time. We will be turning this back on later when we're done. So now, if you go to fuel settings, fuel table one, your speed density will pop up. Move it over to the left side of your screen, and then also go to fuel settings, and you can turn on table two. What you will then get is a box. It may have numbers in here. What I want you to do is take all the numbers in the entire center of the screen, change them to 100s. Notice in the red that the scale goes from 1,200 to 9,000 in my case, and same thing on this table. I want the beginning and the end to have the same number, the entire operating range of the motor. The numbers in the middle can be slightly different from one side to the other, depending on where you're going to be doing most of your adjusting with each table. And notice also that how tight the TPS is on all the bottom cells. I'm jumping from 0 to 1 to 2, 4, 7 up through about 25% throttle, and then 38 to 100 on the top rows. We do this because alpha end tuning is very sensitive on the bottom end of your throttle position sensor. Our goal is to eventually have a nice smooth speed density table that was already pre-tuned, and then a second table that has relatively close to 100 in every cells, maybe plus or minus 10 or 15%, and nice smooth even gradients of change. The easiest way to see that is tag this 3D view and what you get is views that look something like this. If we're getting big spikes or valleys anywhere we probably have a tuning issue. Our goal is to have a nice smooth speed density table and also a nice smooth alpha n table as a correction. Now I want to open up Mega Log Viewer HD to look at the data. And what I've got is quite a few runs in the background, but I want to create by going to Calculated Fields, Custom Field, Create a Custom Field. And what I want to do is create one called Throttling Square Root. It's just an arbitrary name. But what this does, it says if the TPS is less than zero, after the question mark, return a zero, colon. Otherwise, I want to take 10 times the square root of the throttle position sensor. And all these brackets are critical. Your TPS may have a slightly different name. Whatever the name coming in your data log is, that's what I want between the square brackets. If you think about this, what this does is 
let's assume that the TPS goes from 0 to 100. The square root of 100 will return 10 times 10. You get 100 at full throttle. You also get 0 at near zero throttle. But anything in between will end up getting a curve. So let's see what that curve looks like. What this does is makes it easier to see things in the plots. And I'll show you how that works. The other formula I want to create is VE mult or VE multiplier. And I will leave a link down in the bottom uh, to make this a little easier to copy paste. But what I want is square brackets, whatever the AFR or possibly lambda is coming at you in the square brackets divided by whatever your target AFR or lambda is. If that ratio is greater than 1.1, I want to return a 1.1. Otherwise, if the AFR divided by the AFR target is less than 0.9, I want to do a maximum correction of 0.9. Else, just give me whatever that is in that formula. Once you hit enter, it'll ask you to reload the code. Uh, go ahead and restart. Now, if I go to scatter plots and open up quite a bit of data, and the more data you have, the easier this is to see, what I have is speed density on the left and alpha n on the right. And generally, there'll be some point where this any given motor is probably easier to tune in alpha n or throttle based tuning above some RPM range and below some RPM range. It's probably easier to do in speed density. What I'm going to do is highlight the areas that are blue, meaning it looks like we need to multiply the VEs by about a 0.9 to get a little closer to our targets. In the red is the lean areas. And notice right here, it's really difficult in speed density to figure out what and pray tell you can do in that area. But if we look at the data in throttle position based, it's fairly clear that there is a red area right here, lean, showing up as little dots here, almost random. But in reality, it's when I backed out of the throttle. High up in the RPM range, this is up from about uh, 5,000 up through about 8,500. I'm rich all in this area, meaning a 0.9 correction. So what we'll do is correct our VE table on the alpha N, the TPS based table up in this area. Then what we'll do is come into the speed density table and adjust the bottom end where this is the blue area, meaning we're rich. Let's pull about 10% fuel and let's add about 10% in this area. All I've done is highlighted where it's predominantly rich or lean. Here is the same motor on a later race where you can see I'm getting a little bit closer in the speed density. I might be a little bit rich here. I am still lean right here. On the right side, we're getting pretty close. I'll go ahead and highlight the areas where I think I'd still need to pull a little fuel. I might not pull a full 10%, but let's see, we pull 5% in this area, in this area, and eh, maybe another 5 or 10% in that area. And on the alpha end table, what we'll do is Here's a blue area, meaning we need to multiply the VEs by about 0.9. And we want to add some fuel right here. We're not too bad in almost all of this area. We'll leave it alone. Now what I've done is brought in the next week of the same motor. And now we're starting to get really close. On the right side is this formula throttling square root. And what I've done is just made it a little easier to see where you are if this is a throttle based issue or a manifold air pressure issue. This is a plot where on the left side I've got the primary fueling as speed density. On the right it's mass airflow. Notice that both look fairly similar. We're a little bit lean in this area, a little bit rich in this area, but we're getting in the ballpark. Let me go ahead and highlight the areas where I might do some adjustment. And in this case, you could probably do the adjustment almost equally well in mass airflow or in manifold air pressure, speed density. Both of them are fairly easy to hit right here. Um, notice that this red area is not quite square, meaning right in this area right here, we're pretty close. So you would probably want to adjust, add some fuel, maybe 5%, leave a little fuel in the purple area. It wouldn't really make much difference if you did it on the left table, speed density, or on the right table under the mass airflow. I just wanted to give you a quick example 
of the difference between TPS and throttling square root. This is exactly the same data on both sides. But notice how much easier it is to see the pattern in the throttle at the low RPM, low throttle range. On the right side of the plot, they look almost the same. This area right here happens to be right here. Now what I'm showing in scatter plots is the target AFR. Notice how it's green all the way along the full power area plus the idle area, meaning about 12 or 13 AFR target. I let it go a little bit leaner as I back out of the throttle. But what we're shooting for is the same pattern in colors on both sides. On the right side, what I've done is this is the actual AFR. And you can see I'm a little bit rich here, a little bit rich here. On the power, it's not too bad. For some reason, I've got a little blue spot right there I might want to deal with. But we are getting in the ballpark. Now what I've done is just highlighted those areas in a box to make it a little easier to see. Here's where Mega Log Viewer HD really shines. What it is is I've gone to the histogram table generator and by using this little arrow up and arrow right button, I've made the boxes the same as our tuning software. This happens to be the mass airflow load. And in the red box is where I would add about 5% and pull or multiply by 0.96 or so in the blue areas and then go out and retest this motor. Again, I've thrown out startup and warm out and AFR out of range, but you can use any filter you want to throw out any data you want. Same thing goes for RPM versus TPS, where RPM is along the bottom, TPS up the left side, and AFR out in the center. And you can see what the average AFR was in any given tuning cell to see if there's an area you really want to add a little fuel. Again, our filters still work. And here's the same view in RPM versus MAP. And that happens to be exactly the same data. It's interesting how little lean spots show up in speed density that weren't so obvious in Alpha N. Last, once we've got our tune getting really close, let's go ahead and turn on our EGO control by going to the algorithm. And in this case, I turn back on PID. In conclusion, many tunes can be improved by adding a second tuning table. The trick is you just have to be willing to look at the data and see if you need to add a second tuning table. Blended table tuning tends to be an advantage on high strung naturally aspirated motors, less so on turbocharged motors. The primary fueling table must be fairly close before adding a second fueling table it simply gets confusing if you don't have the first one with the primary corrections over there. Always use the fastest data rate you have available for your tuning software. Typically, I like to run about 200 samples per second on an autocross car. On a road race car, where you might have a half hour of data, you might change that down to 100 samples per second. It's usually plenty. This tuning method with the VE Malt can be used on any one table at a time. It does tend to get confusing if you try to adjust two tables in the same test. And turn on closed loop AFR control once the two tables are set. I want to take a moment to thank my friends at tunerstudio.com. These are the guys that developed Mega Log Viewer HD that I use to tune almost all these motors. And be sure to hit subscribe on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.